everybody. Hope everybody's set. Whoop, about to fall on some melons. I'm in the middle of a watermelon field. These aren't our watermelons. We don't grow melons. We got a good buddy of ours that uh, farms that's uh, got all these melons. So yeah, let's check it out. If you haven't done already, please subscribe to our channel. Give the video a like. Let's get started. Uh-oh. At least it's not so hot. Feels good. All right, well, I don't know a whole lot about watermelons. I know that maybe 95% of all these melons out here are seedless watermelons. Then you've got very few seeded watermelons. The seeded melons are the long oval shaped melons, whereas the seedless watermelons are kind of smaller, kind of like a basketball melon. And I believe they group them into three different classes of melons, depending on the size. Uh, years ago, we used to grow melons. Who is this? Dentist appointment. Cassidy has a dentist appointment. Years ago, maybe three, four years ago, we grew watermelons. We grew melons for about five years. Did really good on them some years, but toward the end, the issue was trying to find the help to gather the melons. So we'd make a good crop of melons, but then we would struggle to get them out of the field before they rot. So we said, heck with it. We'll just stick with peanuts and cotton. So anyways, let's mosey on down there. There's another crew. Looks like they got a tractor hooked up to the bus trying to pull them out. So we've got a lot of rain over, I don't know, three to four inches so uh it's a little sticky let's head that way i got the bees always hauling some bees for your melons oh lord i better put this thing in four wheel drive here we go we made it we made it all right here we are now you notice i've got the tractor hooked up to the school bus pulling them out uh Gathering watermelons is very taxing. A lot of physical labor, hot, sweaty. So it makes even matters worse when it's super wet. Then you're not only are you sw swimming through the gnats and all that, you're also uh, dealing with the, the wet dirt. they grow these melons on plastic so you notice here's the plastic and in the middle of the plastic should have yep your drip tape right here so that uh pretty much drips water uh, and they also pump out liquid fertilizer through it to uh fertilize the melons get them growing better it's really hard to walk in a watermelon field without tripping over melons okay yeah All right, here we are now at the packing shed. So the trucks, they get loaded in the field and they bring them here, sort them, put them in boxes, and then ship them out. So let's go check it out. So the bus is coming here, they back up to this conveyor belt, and they go down the line and put them in the boxes. everybody well I'm here with uh, Dustin and Mark with DM farms and this is their operation and not only do they farm watermelons they do cotton peanuts corn what else peas, peas. so pretty big operation but I'm gonna turn the camera over here and uh, how many acres of melons you guys growing this year uh, about 200 
200 acres. Uh, what about variety? What variety melons? So most of the seedless we plant are embassy. Um, the pollinators we use to go with them, um, mostly 720s, but we do have some Australas as well. Okay. What would you say 95% is seedless? Very few seeded melons are sold anymore? So we plant the field solid seedless. Right. And then we go back between every third and fourth seedless plant with a pollinator or a seeded plant. Gotcha. All right. A seedless watermelon will not pollinate. So. And another question I thought of, uh, as far as the sizes, I noticed in the field today, looks like they were only picking a certain size of melon. If you would talk on that a little bit as far as like what size melon sells and, and all that. So as you know, the 4th of July just passed. The market always gets kind of tight 4th of July. Yep. Um, we're right now we're selling a few 45 count and all the 60 counts we can harvest. Um, the 60 count or the smaller watermelons, what that means is, uh, for instance, this box right here is a 60 count. That means there's 60 watermelons in this box. Okay. This box is based on 700 pounds of watermelons in the box. You know, obviously the pallet and bin adds weight to that, but. Uh, 36 count would be the larger seedless. They're mm -hmm. a little slow right now. Uh, we're anticipating the market to pick back up a little bit, maybe towards first of next week. If you have a really good day, how many loads do you think you could get? How many school bus loads? Oh shoot, we have run 35, 40 in a day through here. Oh wow. Um, you can't always do that. You got weather that stops you from doing that. Or right. Like right now we're in a sales slump, so you don't want to fill up your warehouse with a bunch of product when it's moving slow. You know, you want to keep your, your stock fresh, you know. That's right. So, um, it, we can run 30, 40 buses a day, no problem, mm -hmm. and load out. Oh, shoot. We might load out eight semis a day. We might load out with highs 18 or 19 semis in a day. Okay. So, it kind of depends yes, how everything falls into place. Right. Let's talk about um, planting these melons. So what time of the year do you plant the melons? So we buy seed in January mm -hmm. and send them to the greenhouse. Okay. Uh, we use LTF greenhouses. And they, uh, they plant them and grow them. We'll get delivery of the plants sometime in March. Our target start date is March 20th. Um, weather played a major role in that this time. We were yeah. several weeks behind. Gotcha. Um, but our target date to start planting is March 20th. Um, and however long it takes to plant 200 acres, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of times labor dictates a lot of how long it takes. Yeah. yeah. Now is every acre y'all planted under plastic or you got any that's yes. not on plastic? Yes. Yeah. Every acre is on wide plastic mm -hmm. um, and drip tape irrigation. Yep. And within that drip tape, you water the crop and you also can pump fertilizer through we the drip pump, tape. Uh, yeah. We pump fertilizer every week. Every week, okay. We have a crop consultant that checks our watermelons every week, uh, or actually twice a week, Yeah. and they pull tissue samples every week. Okay. They send them to Waters Lab, we get the samples back, and we base our pumping schedule on what we find. Right. All right. And the last question, we mentioned you guys also farm peanuts, cotton, corn. What's, the, what's it like trying to, to navigate not only growing all these melons, but also you got all your row crops. Is that a struggle to, to try to manage that? That puts it mildly. Right. Huge struggle. Oh, yeah. It's a huge struggle. Because we're still farming over 3,000 row crop acres. Yeah. And then this 200 acres of watermelons is more, than, just the watermelons is more than a full time job for one person. Yeah. And then oh, the yeah. row crop, that's at least a full time job for, I'm talking about for us as bosses, you know, mm -hmm. having to oversee this stuff. So, yeah. It is a struggle. It's a hard time because we're wide open in watermelons. We're still planting peanuts and cotton and yeah. such as that. It's not easy. Yep. Somebody's got to do it then, right? Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, good deal. We appreciate it. Uh, Dustin and Mark, thanks for letting me come out today and uh, go to the uh, watermelon field and the packing shed. So uh, that's going to be the end of the video. Uh, Jesus loves you. Keep in the field, Rose. We'll see you. Bye.